Deciding to get a solar and battery system is one of the smartest investments you can make for your home. And done right, it can help to save a lot of money, give you a level of independence from the grid and add substantial value to your property. But done wrong, it can turn into a disaster and cost a lot more than it should, especially when you add unnecessary components that you don't need. It's not as simple as one-clicking something on Amazon and waiting for delivery. It takes careful research to ensure that you get the best return from your solar and battery system. In this video, we'll cover eight of the biggest mistakes that homeowners make when installing solar and battery and how you can avoid falling into the same traps. Now for this video, we're actually on location at a house where we've installed well over 100 solar panels, four different types of solar panel, we've installed three different battery systems and even a biomass boiler back in the day. So while we tell you about eight of the most common mistakes people make getting solar, we're also going to walk around the property and take a look at the various technologies. Now the first and arguably most important mistake is choosing the wrong installer. You need a company that properly understands the intricacies of solar system design and can tailor a setup specifically to your home, maximizing the return that you're getting from your roof space, because that's what it's all about. A good installer will look at your roof, your electricity consumption patterns, your long-term plans and your shading issues, as well as many other factors, and then design a system that is bespoke to your roof using the best technologies available at the time, not just something they happen to have in stock. This is where a local specialist may come up trumps against a larger national installer. To help streamline operations and maximize their economies of scale, national scale installers will very often buy panels in bulk, whereas local installers will drop ship them on a job by job basis from wholesalers in the UK. Because panel technology moves so quickly and the national installers are buying containers of panels at a time, they'll very often be selling out of date old technology that doesn't enable you to maximize your return on investment. For example, at the time of making this video, Octopus Energy is offering the JA 450 watt solar panel. Local specialists like Spirit Energy are offering much more efficient 485 watt solar panels that are almost identical in physical size to the ones that Octopus use. So the local specialist can often get at least 8% more out of your roof space just by using up-to-date panels. That's huge and over 25 years can add up to a massive difference in savings, as well as boosting winter solar generation when you really need as much power as you can get. Always do your due diligence on the company fitting the system. They should ideally have a reputation for quality, have been trading for a few years, and have great accreditations and reviews to back them up. You should find out who will actually be carrying out the install. Will it be in-house installers or is it subcontracted? You should also check the certifications that they talk about on their website because believe it or not, many installers have actually faked accreditations in the past, which has left homeowners unable to get their systems MCS certified. You can also ask to see recent installs in person and speak to the installer's recent customers for a first-hand account of what they're like to work with. And of course, always get at least two to three quotes. Now this next one may surprise you, and it's actually to do with how you size batteries when trying to optimize for getting the fastest payback possible. Bigger isn't always better. Getting the fastest payback from a battery comes from cycling it daily and feeding that stored electricity back into the house, which saves the most money. If you get a battery that's too large for your needs, it won't cycle to the house fully each day, meaning that you'll have excess stored electricity that either isn't doing any work or is being sent back to the grid, which isn't as profitable as using the electricity to offset the house's daily consumption. So if a certain portion of the battery isn't being used optimally, that drags down the overall return from the battery system. While it is sensible to future-proof if you see your usage increasing for whatever reason, you need to be careful not to overdo it. And if necessary, choose a battery system that is modular so you can add more storage on in the future should the data show you need it. Oversizing up front can significantly extend the payback period and lower the return on investment. A good installer should be modeling your load profile and showing you how the battery would cycle under different scenarios. Continuing on the battery topic for this one, a common misconception people very often have is that solar panels and batteries automatically keep the house running in a power cut. 
That's not the case, and solar and battery systems won't operate in a power cut unless specifically designed to do so. Unless your battery has emergency power backup functionality and it's been wired with an EPS switch or backup circuit, your solar and battery system will shut down during a blackout. This surprises a lot of people, but it's a built-in safety feature to protect grid engineers. Without isolation, your panels could still be energizing the lines outside your property, which poses a danger during the grid maintenance. Even with a battery system that's set up for backup, the solar panels themselves won't automatically generate power in a power cut. Some systems require additional wiring or switching logic to allow the solar to charge the battery or supply the home in backup mode. So if backup is important to you, make sure you choose an installer that has experience installing systems with power cut protection and make sure you choose a battery system that is proven to work reliably in a power cut. This battery system beside me has the ability to operate in a power cut. The grid line comes in, the system's then got the functionality to cut the grid in a power cut, meaning the batteries can continue to supply the house, the solar can continue to generate, and the whole thing is islanded from the grid, meaning the grid is safe and whoever is working on the grid is also safe. So, mistake number four, bird mesh. Now, bird mesh is often considered to be an optional extra, but if you don't have it, pigeons and rodents can get under your panels. Now, this can cause all sorts of issues, from chewed cables to constant scratching and noise under the panels. It also risks fire hazards, insulation damage, and future maintenance costs. Once birds start nesting under the panels, they're very difficult to deter. Even if your property hasn't had an issue before, solar panels provide a sheltered, warm space that attracts birds quickly. If you're not sure whether you need bird protection or not, then it's worth taking a look down the street to see if any of your neighbors have solar systems and whether they're having issues without bird guard. Some solar systems, like this one, are never touched by birds, while others seem to get decimated. I would say that if you're unsure as to whether you need it, then it's probably worth getting a wire mesh fitted for an extra few hundred pounds while the installation is going on. Retrofitting bird mesh later is usually much more expensive and disruptive, especially if you need to put the scaffolding back up. Installing bird guard is a small investment that protects a much larger one. Mistake number five, not going in roof when re-roofing. Now, if you're planning to re-roof your house, that's the perfect time to install solar, as the roof is clear and the scaffolding is already up. But many people miss the opportunity to go in roof. In roof mounting replaces the tiles underneath the panels, saving on tile costs and making the installation easier, cleaner and more aesthetically pleasing. It also saves money on scaffolding, as both jobs can be done at the same time. There are some trade-offs, fewer panel options and less flexibility on layout, but for many people it's worth it. Another option to consider is solar PV tiles. These look much more like standard roof tiles and offer an even sleeker, more seamless finish compared to in-roof panels, although they tend to come at a higher cost. If aesthetics are a key consideration, they're well worth discussing with your installer. If you'd like a quote for solar tiles, please do get in touch with Spirit Energy. Mistake number six, assuming that microinverters and optimizers are always better. Microinverters and optimizers are often sold as advanced solutions for shade and panel level performance monitoring, but they come at a cost. These systems are far more expensive and often have higher failure rates compared to string inverters. Each optimizer or microinverter is an additional electronic component installed on the roof, exposed to temperature swings and the UK's unpredictable weather. While the tech is clever, it introduces many more potential points of failure. And if a unit fails, getting it replaced can cost hundreds of pounds in labor and scaffolding costs, which destroys the economics and potential financial benefits of the premium technology. Roof level technology does have its place on a heavily shaded or complicated roof, but for the vast majority of homes with clear unshaded roofs, a standard inverter will often be more reliable, just as efficient and much easier to service if something goes wrong. Don't get upsold on tech you don't need. It's best to keep the system as simple as possible. If your installer is pushing shade mitigation like optimizers and microinverters, then ask them to justify it by showing you two performance models, one with a standard inverter and one with the optimizers and microinverters. 
Very often, we find that while the technology can help with shading, it doesn't always end up saving more money over 25 years than it actually costs to install in the first place, especially if the components start to fail. There's a lot of hype in this industry at the moment about buying electricity when it's cheap and selling it back to the grid when it's expensive, and the electricity providers are willing to pay a lot for the energy. While this sounds appealing, the actual returns are minimal and not necessarily a prudent long-term investment. At the moment, you can buy electricity for about 7 pence overnight and then export it back to the grid for 15 pence or more during the day, leaving you a profit of 8 pence. However, there are two issues with this. Firstly, you need to account for the cost of the storage. Most residential scale battery systems work out to around 500 pounds per kilowatt hour of storage. Now, assuming you're cycling the battery once per day for 15 years, that means your average cost per unit of electricity stored in the battery over that time is about nine pence per kilowatt hour. So already by charging overnight for seven pence, that's costing you 16p overall. Selling it back to the grid for 15p is already a loss. Even if you do manage to get a very cheap battery, you're not going to make more than a few pence per kilowatt hour, which is nothing compared to what you save by offsetting your house's electricity consumption costs. The other issue here is that the data suggests that this peak to off-peak arbitrage situation may not actually last long. As the grid starts to fill up with cheaper electricity from solar and battery systems, the energy companies aren't so willing to pay for exported energy and may start to lower electricity export rates. Check out Gary Does Solar's video on the topic to learn about the electricity duck curve and why Gary suggests it's not prudent to design a system for profiting on export. Instead of becoming a home energy day trader, set your system up to offset your own electricity bills. Now, mistake number eight, not taking the practicalities and aesthetics of the system into account from the start. You're gonna be living with your solar and battery system for 15 to 30 years, so it's worth making sure you're happy with how it looks from the start. All black panels cost slightly more, but blend in much better, especially on dark or slate roofs. Frameless options are also available for a cleaner finish. A white battery unit stuck in your hallway or kitchen isn't ideal, so plan for the battery location early. Wall-mounted batteries can look tidy in a garage or utility room, but some systems can also be installed outside, which might be better. If you're looking to get an extension in the future, it may be worth considering that when deciding where to install panels and where to put your battery. Speak to your installer about the layout of the kit, the cable routing and the finish of the system, as well as the housing options for the components. A well-designed system should be something you're proud to show off, not something you want to hide and not something that gets in the way. Thanks for watching. If you're thinking of getting solar and battery installed, check out our case studies and videos on how to maximize the return from your system. Or get in touch and we'll help you design a system tailored to your roof, your energy usage and your long-term plans. Please do like and subscribe if you found the video helpful and would like to be kept up to date on the latest technologies and trends in the solar industry.